might need to project. Recording. Hello, everyone. I wish you a good day, a good afternoon, and a good evening. Welcome to this fun virtual 2021 tournament room 18. Our host in this session is Fred Becker, who will be managing the technical aspects of our match. Judge Phyllis Redhead has an education in emergency management and homeland security, brought interest in relief, rebuilding efforts, including emergency planning, preparedness, and mitigation for natural and man-made disasters and earth sciences. She's a member of the Arizona chapter of the NSS. Judge Becca Steiner is a recent PhD in Communication Studies and Assistant Debate Coach at the University of Georgia. She has previously coached at Wake Forest University and the University of Florida. She has coached several teams to the National Debate Tournament, including the 2019 NDT finalists and 2019 ADA champions. Becca also judged in the 2020 Spun Debate Program. Welcome to the debates, judges. Judges, please remain in the Zoom room at the end of the debate for reporting purposes. And I am the moderator and facilitator for room 18, and my name is Apurva. I would like to read the following statement to you. The winning team is chosen based on their skill and effort and not on any preset NSS position. NSS clearly believes that humanity should continue to explore, develop, and settle space. However, NSS also believes that open, honest debate will facilitate that goal. It is important that space advocates understand and be able to express the anti-space case. No statement made by any debater or coach is an official position of NSS. I also have some important information about winning in the spun debate format. The spun debates presents a distinct and wonderful challenge that incorporates an exciting and novel method of cooperation. To be clear, ignoring opposition content, exclusion of debaters, aggressive tones and interactions will count against your chance of winning the debate. What counts for winning a spun debate is that you demonstrate mutual respect, inclusion of all debaters, constructive interactions, listening, the quality and substance of the content you present. These are the tenets of universalization, which are reinforced in this debate format. Now let's meet our debaters. The first is Team Alcantara, which is named for a spaceport in Brazil. Team Alcantara, please give us your name and the country you're representing. Hello, everybody. My name is Andre, and I'm from Russia, Romania. And besides that, I want to say good luck to everybody and just have fun. Hello, my name is Maria Chupal, and I'm also from Russia, Romania. Hello, my name is Daniela, and I'm from Peru. Thank you, Team Alcantara. Next, Team Shaba, named for the space code located in Democratic Republic of Congo. Team Shaba, please give us your name and the country you're representing. Hi, my name is Antonio, and I'm from Romania. Hi, my name is Maria, and I'm from Peru. Hello, my name is Skyla and I'm from South Africa. Hi, my name is Eureka and I'm from Japan. Thank you, Team Shaba. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand in your participants icon on your screen. Please mute your mic unless you're speaking and only the presenting team and judges should turn on their videos unless directed by the moderator. Our debating format today follows the same format as on June 11th, 2021. All right, Mr. Becker, do we only have the judges and affirmative team with live videos and mics? Yes. Let's get started. We'll hear from the first speaker from Team Alcantara representing the affirmative position for the resolution, space traffic management should be regulated by the UN Security Council. Team Alcantara, your first speaker may begin your affirmative intro. You have three minutes. Thanks. <clears throat> Respected jury, coaches, and my fellow mates, a very good morning, afternoon, evening to all and all present here. My name is Daniela, and I will be the first speaker from Team Malantara. The second speaker, Andrew, will present to you an argument about space pollution, the disadvantages it brings, and why the UN Security Council should be responsible for this. After that, Maria will talk about the space agency's development. In the end, Andrew will summarize the debate, make the final statements, and conclude why we definitely think the UN Security Council should regulate STM. First, I would like to define some terms from the proposed resolution. Space traffic management is defined by the International Academy of Astronautics as a set of technical and regulatory provisions for promoting safe access into outer space, operations in outer space, and return from outer space to Earth free from physical or radio frequency interference. Space traffic includes um, launch vehicles as well as orbited objects, for instance, satellites of all sizes. 
the UN Security Council has primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. It has 15 members, from which five are permanent, and each member has one vote. This means a huge collaboration between 15 countries, something that is also, also called universalization. This way, we can go to space as humanity and not as countries. Besides that, according to Andrew J. Dilk in Journal of Air Law and Commerce, space traffic is currently managed and regulated by the Federal Aviation Administration. Now, I want you to be careful for to this. As we already know, the UN Security Council is split up into six organs. The General Assembly, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship um, Council, the Secretariat and International Court of Justice. According to globalpolicy.org, uh, the, the Security Council is the United Nations' most powerful body because it is the only part that the other organizations listens to. UNOSA is the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs, which promotes peaceful and safe use and exploration of space, being regulated by the UN Security Council for international cooperation and is a sign of active universalization. According to Director Simonetta Di Pipo, UNOSA is a sub-department of the secretary body. Its power is shown by the fact that it cannot do anything without the UN Security Council. It it only managed to realize uh, seven guidelines, also called recommendations about debris. This is why UNOSA and ITU don't have enough power to be responsible by themselves of STM regulations. They need the UN Security Council. So we will demonstrate to you why the UN Security Council should definitely regulate space traffic management. Next, after the negative team gives the introduction and the definitions, and they will present you with the first argument. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we have speaker one from Team Shaba. Please give your three minute intro. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We would like to thank the NSS Sprung program managers for the opportunity to participate in these debates. We, as the negative side, agree with the affirmative side that universalization is key in solving the problem of space traffic management. However, we do not think the UN Security Council is the best actor to do this. We will be giving a counter plan that we believe will be more effective in solving the problem of space debris and in long term achieve universalization. We will create a new organization called SWIP under the United Nations under the following model. Number one, it will be a similar organization in function to the ISSF, but will have the same position as other bodies under the UN, such as UNAIDS, which works to fight HIV and AIDS. It will focus solely on space traffic management and space exploration. And number two, the UN will give SWIP its financing and enforcement structures. Number three, we will base the enforcement structures on population and single representation to create a concept that reflects universalization better. Number four, private sectors will also be invited to meetings for this new organization. Number five, Headquarters will change every year for the following meeting, like Olympics incentive. Number six, there will be a five-year period to gather resources and hire fit administrators for SWIP. Number seven, SWIP will have the following responsibilities related to space traffic management. A, all the space traffic management within 5,000 miles of Earth orbit. B, all changes to orbital trajectories. C, coordination of all launch trajectories that exceed 100 miles altitude. D, control of all activities related to removal of space debris. Finally, for number eight, SWIFT so will, will be given control of all near space radar systems currently held by the US, China, etc. Or SWIFT so will develop near space radar systems during its standard phase. Thank you, and we ask support of our plan. Thank you, Shaba. Uh, now let's hear from Yaftu from Team Alcantara for your beginning three minute arguments. Okay, so hello everybody. My name is Borgman Bukur Andre. And as you heard earlier from my teammate Daniela, I will be talking about space pollution and why we truly believe that the US Security Council should definitely regulate STM. According to NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, in an article published in November, it was mentioned that the space station has maneuvered three times in 2020 to avoid debris. Besides that, on 2nd June 2021, 
two weeks ago, Space Junk hit the International Space Station, leaving a hole in the, in the robotic arm. So the safety in space is on the right point, isn't it? Let's take a look at the UN Security Council now. It is split up into six organs, the General Assembly, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, the Trustship Council, the Secretariat, and International Court of Justice. According to globalpolicy.org and UN.org, the Security Council is the United Nations' most powerful body, and it is the only body that organs listen to and that can issue binding rules. And now you may ask, what proof does exist showing that the UN Security Council would be better to regulate STM rather than the FAA? What about UNOSA, the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, and COPUS, the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, which has 95 permanent country members? These are organizations that totally depend on the UN Security Council. For example, according to Hertzwall, Director of Space Policy Institute, the Bright Star 3 took North Korean satellite that was launched in December 2012. UNOSA wanted to launch that, but they needed approval from the U.S. Security Council as well. If they don't get it, a satellite can't be launched. So the U.S. Security Council already has a starting point regarding STM. According to Director uh, Simonetta Di Puipo, you know, so it's a sub-department of the secretary body, as Daniela already said. Its power is shown by the fact that it cannot do anything without the UN Security Council. It only managed to release seven recommendations, not anything to put into practice. This is why UNOSA does not have enough power to be responsible by themselves of, of STM regulations. They need the UN Security Council. According to Simonata Di Pipo, director of, of UNOSA, is partnering with Sierra Space, a private space agency. The United Nations has demonstrated its leadership and support in promoting dialogue between governments, encouraging the development of national and private space agencies, and implementation of norms to deal with space congestion. According to an article published in May 2019, essays already teaming up with the United Nations. If we collaborate at a bigger scale, we can though go into space as humanity, not as ESA or NASA, something that is called universalization itself as disrespectful and not only for the environment, but also for humankind. Do you know which is the most important aspect of letting UNSC regulate STM? Over 14 thousand pieces of space junk belong to Russia. UNSC is the only big organization in which Russia is involved, so it is clearly the key for removing space debris. Thank you. This is one of the reasons we think that UN Security Council should regulate STM. The second argument will be brought by Mariah and will, and will illustrate the collaboration between agencies and their development. Thank you, Alcantara. Uh, we have a one minute silent break at this time. Now we have a uh, speaker Nek, uh, Nektu from Team Shaba. Please give your beginning arguments and respond to after in your six minute allotment. Uh, can I just make sure that I'm audible? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, my time starts now. We as the negative side believe that the counter plan our first speaker has introduced is far more effective in managing space traffic and realizing universalization. In my speech, I will first be presenting to you two advantages of our, of our counter plan, and then I'll be giving direct responses to the previous affirmative speaker. So first, our first advantage is effectiveness. This argument is twofold. 
First of all, a specialized sector for space traffic management will increase efficiency in space debris removal. We will have day-to-day -day monitoring and removal of space debris as seeded in first negative. By having an organization of, of professionals in the field of STM and sweep, we are able to gather the world's most advanced technologies and use them most efficiently under one organization and framework. Some examples are the removed debris satellites from Airbus, laser space debris removal from SkyPerfect JSAT Corp, and the LCD spacecraft from Japan's Astroscale. This new framework is necessary as, um, as matters of space debris is getting worse by the day due to the Kessler syndrome. According to Luisa Inosetti, head of the European Space Agency's Clean Space Initiative, the, the overall orbital debris population will continue to grow as collisions between items generate fresh debris in a cascade effect. Any existing frameworks have proven to be ineffective from this, as evident from this worsening situation. Our new organization and framework is the only realistic way to actually remove space debris. Second of all, SWEEP will, be, uh, will get private corporations involved as stated in our model. This is important because the UN Security Council does not have the power to interfere with internal affairs in the status quo. The non-intervention in the internal affairs of states by the United Nations clause is under Article 2, Paragraph 7 of the Charter of the United Nations. This is therefore one of the largest differences between affirmative and negative cases. Not having private corporations involved is a huge problem because the achievements of these private space organizations are rapidly increasing in recent years. For example, SpaceX, a private com company under Elon Musk is deploying massive constellations of small satellites called Starlink intended to provide global high-speed internet access. The satellites, which number around 1000 at present, has sparked controversy because of concerns they might create light pollution and interfere with astronomical research. If there's a lack of communication between these companies and other nation-run space organizations, the damage will be disastrous. In order to properly manage space traffic, it is critical that we also include these private corporations. That is something the UN Security Council cannot provide, but our counterplan uniquely can, by having sweep control launch trajectories, again, set by first negative. Our second um, benefit, uh, advantage, is universalization. We believe the UN Security Council directly goes against the principles of universalization. This is because there are permanent members in the UN Security Council with the power to veto whatever resolution they do not like. We believe this is the most undemocratic element of the UN, as well as the main cause of ina inaction on certain international issues, as it effectively prevents UN action against the permanent members and their allies. This is why we need an organization that reflects universalization better. Two unique harms coming from the veto system, exclusively coming from the Security Council. First, this veto power has the ability to physically block countries from the UN, and this has happened in the past. One example is when the US had blocked North and South Vietnam from taking part of the UN amidst the Vietnam War. Another example was on how China used their veto power between 1972 to 74 to prevent Bangladesh's membership. Now, although these things are in the past, it is undeniable that permanent members have an unjust power over other countries. The UN Security Council perfor performs a sort of selective universalization, a principle which in practice only reflects the opinions of countries with economic and social power in the international society. Second um, harm of the veto system, permanent members were created based on their importance in the aftermath of World War II. We believe, um, pr principally speaking, we believe these are very outdated values. And using the structure of the UN, UN Security Council will, br will bring the power imbalances on Earth into space, which is completely against the concept of universalization. Universalization is about cooperation and equal chances for countries, regardless of their power on Earth. This is important because having one power have control over or, or Earth's orbit and space would create massive inequalities. Managing space traffic is something we must do together on equal grounds, and SWEEP is the only organization that can actually do that. So moving on quickly to my response to the previous speakers. First, firstly, we agree that on the fact that safety in space is in danger. We agree. So the question is, which is the better actor to regulate space traffic? The affirmative side gave you basically two points. So the, first they said that UNSC, uh, the Security Council is the most powerful body um, and they can bind rules. Two questions. First, why would this apply to space issues, right? We, we think that the Security Council can resolve problems between countries on Earth, but they do not have any experience solving um, issues in outer space. Secondly, we also say that uh, the Security Council lacks proficiency that our counterplan provides. Um, 
And secondly, um, they also stated that the Security Council already has a head start in space traffic management, and that was basically like their only justification um, for this point. However, two things, again, first of all, uh, the existence of the Kessler syndrome, right? Obviously, current frameworks um, and, and current plans are not working. They're not effective. We are in desperate need of a new framework. Second of all, um, we, we hope to see more context and mechanization for why the Security Council is best suited to monitor space issues, because that's, that's something we have not seen yet from the affirmative side. And lastly, they also stated that um, the UN, the, having the Security Council be in charge will ensure that people uh, that, that people can go to space as humanity. However, we believe that Security Council only reflects 15 of the 195 countries that exist in the world. We say that is not universalization, um, and therefore um, we are very proud to negate. Thank you, Jacob. We have a one minute silent break at this time. F2 of Alcantara now returns for a three minute response to NEC2. Okay, so hello, everybody. Again, I'm going to respond to the negative team's argument. So uh, I heard that you are uh, a, ma you're making your own organization as an approach. So how many states or countries do you think your approach should have? Because you haven't presented a number. The US Security Council, as you already know, is made out of 15, from which five are permanent, 10 are changing once every two years. So they also have countries from uh, Africa, Asia, uh, all these uh, continents. This means a huge collaboration between all countries, within the whole planet, further directed as universalization. If you're not agreeing to this argument, do you think that STM should be regulating as it is right now? Beside that, UNOSA, which belongs to the UN Security Council, is made out of 95 permanent countries. We propose UN Security Council to regulate STM and further have a better collaboration with UNOSA, which has the experience it needs. Uh, besides that, what UNOSA has launched over 11,000 satellites till now in order to gain that experience and not only. So this is the experience I'm talking about. What experience does your organization have? It hasn't. You cannot simply say we're making this organization to uh, that will surely solve all the problems without having any proof that they will do like that. The lack of proficiency. Did you know that in, in 1962, the United Nations Security Council was supporting the United States. The Soviet army launched missiles toward Cuba, but the USA helped them. President John F. Kennedy decided to place a naval quarantine or blockade on Cuba to prevent further Soviet shipments of missiles. So basically, the UN Security Council also stopped the attack upon Cuba. One more time, cooperation. You have talked about the. You haven't talked about the professionals in your organizations. You said you you will have professionals. What? Well. Who do you refer to? Russia, China, you mentioned those. But how are you going to be sure they will accept to enter your organization? You said you will invite them. Well, guess what? NATO invited Russia in the 1990s to join their organization, and Russia hasn't joined till now. In just five days ago, on June 14th, uh, NATO has made an uh, an article in which they stated that they want Russia to join in and they haven't. Besides that, do you know which the most important aspect of letting UN Security Council regulate STEM is? It is the uh, over 14,000 species of space junk that belong to Russia. Russia won't enter your organization that easily. It is in the UN Security Council and it is the only way to remove that debris. The same applies for China. China is not in NATO. Is India in NATO? 
No, what makes you think they will simply enter your organization? Besides that, what makes you think that your organization is going to be better than others? That's why I have another so I would like to discuss in the acrostics as well. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Uh, let's now hear F1 and 2 and NAIC 1 and 2 in a four minute cross examination. Alcantara will begin the process. Uh, can we have speaker one and two from both the teams uh, with your videos on? Uh, Daniela and Maria. Maria from Shaba. Okay. Yeah, you may begin. Thank you. So first of all, I would like to discuss with Daniela a few things because she told me uh, so we discussed about their organization and I wanted to ask Daniela to ask a question because we haven't understood something. Mm, yeah, okay. So Saba team, uh, could you answer me? What makes you think your organization will be better than the other existing ones? Okay, so first of all, uh, we gave you the specific, the unique harms that come from having this, uh, uh, from using the Security Council, right? We said that it reflects the opposite of universalization, first of all. Um, and uh, we, uh, we also said that um, that the, the Security Council lacks proficiency. Now you did mention UNOSA, but the uniqueness of our plan is that our organization is focused on space traffic management, whereas UNOSA is affiliated with other space affairs. We think that, um, our case like, um, is more realistic in actually removing space debris from Earth's orbit. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it did. But so you said your organization will be will direct strictly to STM, right? Uh, correct. OK, but what proof do you have? Like, just UNOSA has launched over 11,000 satellites, has a space policy. It has a budget of over 60. So the US Security Council has a budget of over $65 billion. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But they haven't solved the problem of space debris. It's getting worse. As I said in my, as, as I because said, because they're not regulating STM. Because, hold on. Because, um, so if, if you're saying, okay, here's my problem with um, your case. So, um, if you don't give us um, a specific solution to the problem right now, you, you can't just be assertive and say that the, that UNOSA is going to fix all the problems, right? Okay. We want to see proper mechanization and process of how your plan is going to work. So that's basically my question. So how is that going to work? Okay, so I'm going to answer a question because uh, UNOSA has already released seven guidelines about mm -hmm. space debris. Since 2010, they have me made meetings uh, each year in 2011 and so on till now. And this year they have received $10 million only for this part. Besides that, a very big budget. So I want to ask uh, your first speaker, what guidelines would you think about for the uh, your organization to regulate STM? Because you know, SA already has a plan and okay, it sorry, will make that in practice. Before that, um, that wasn't really answering my question. I'm asking for results. If it, if this is something that happened from 2010, you would expect there to be some kind of um, impact, some influence, some results, but we're not no, seeing it. No, you won't because they, or, they only have guidelines. This year they have received the money to put that into practice. They have the plan and they have a really well-structured plan. So what but, is the justification that that's going to, that's going to work? If it took that guideline, um, uh, what, what, what years? Is it? Six years to be put into motion. Like we don't really see, like how, that doesn't really prove the effectiveness of those guidelines. Okay, but what is your effectiveness of your organization if you don't have a plan? Right, right. No, we gave you. Okay, we gave you um, these specific technologies. I gave you three examples. Do you want me to repeat them? Yeah, please. So I gave you. Hold on. I gave you for uh, first remove debris satellites from Airbus. Secondly, laser space debris removal from Sky Perfect JSAT Corp. And the LCD spacecraft from Japan's Astro Scale. So we and gave you examples of how these these technologies 
literally physically take the uh, brief your time out. is up Eureka you may or finish your sentence uh, I will finish my time thank you thank you uh, let's now hear from F3 from team Alcantara for the first half of your documents you have three minutes you can hear me Hello, everybody. My name is Maria Chupala, and today I'm going to, to be the third speaker of Team Alcantara, and I will demonstrate you why we think that the UN Security Council should definitely regulate space traffic management. It is a precedent that the United Nations can regulate space by ensure, ensuring that resources will be distributed equally in the future and not to generate a political conflict between countries, something that represents a characteristic of universalization. According to Jonathan Mediol, an astronomer for Harvard for uh, astrophysics, he said at the virtual web summit 2020 that we are at the beginning of a new space investor revolution. So there is a need to have a space traffic management capable of handling the current space and area to encourage the development of this space agency and ensure the safety and sustainability of their space activities and operations. Something respectful, not only for our planet, but also for humanity called universalization. There is a platform that in 2010, UNOSA, coordinated by the UN Security Council, launched the Human Space Technology Initiative, which provides an exchange of information and activities related to space exploration to encourage collaboration between countries. According to the United Nations website, the initiative is part of an effort to enable access to space education, data, technology, and research, creating access to space for all. Now, let me present you the second proof of how the UN Security Council has already developed space policies and should be responsible for the STM. E2, the International Telecommunication Union, has 193 states members. Its space service department is responsible for coordination and reporting procedure for space system, but also managing the procedure for space-related assignment plans, already having a space policy. The representative of E2, Pullman Zoo, the general secretary, how was he elected? The secretary general selection is a subject to the veto of the five of the five, uh, permanent members of the Security Council. So it was chosen by the UN Security Council. One more time, ITO needs the UN Security Council's uh, power. According to ITO.in, the International Telecommunication Union also coordinates cybersecurity. ITO includes strategies in five work areas, legal measures, technical and procedural uh, measures, organization structure, capability building, and international cooperation. Besides that, let's take a look at the budget. According to Simona Di Pipo, director of UNOSA, in proposed program budget, UNOSA is, has a budget of $3.5 million. According to the BNL, budget of the International Telecommunication Union for 2020-2021 is $30,000 million. According to $30,000, according to Lessa Blanchfield, specialist in international relations, the UN Security Council has $6.58 billion of budget, way bigger than UNOSA or ITU. One more time, showing its power. Thank you. This is the second reason why we think that the UN Security Council should definitely regulate space traffic management because they also encourage universalization by helping the private space agencies, which is truly important. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, we have a one minute silent break at this time. Nectri from Team Shaba, please give uh, your arguments and response to Afri in your six-minute development. Okay, so I'm going to start in three, two, 
one. So the affirmative, uh, the affirmative team said that the, we cannot enforce countries to join without UN Security Council. That's like saying that we cannot, we cannot enforce countries to take part in the UN Security Council and have decisions made there be reflected in member states. We clearly stated from first affirmative that UN will give this organization its enforcement structures. Even if that is not true, we don't see su sufficient justification from F that efficient decisions on STM can be made in UN Security Council. Council, because if we take this argument, the same people that are, are uncooperative for our organization will be uncooperative in the UN Security Council, considering the fact that countries that are likely to be less cooperative in STM are countries that are leading space development and also have the veto vote in the UN Security Council. We think our organization gives a much better chance at equal standings when making decisions about space. And we as the negative side still believe that you as a strong promoter of universalization shouldn't pick an institution, UN and, and its subdivisions, that does not support at all universalization. Just like my team said, the veto power is the most undemocratic way to vote things as it can produce many conflicts between the nations. And I quote, the, re the re reality is that international institutions like the UN can only be as effective as its members allow it to be. So this quote, quote was said by the ex prime minister of India. And moreover, we should not even use an institution that does not solely focus on space traffic management. If we want to do things efficiently, we have to, to have a dedicated institution for this major problem. This proves how inefficient UN Security Council will be at managing space traffic. Another problem we need to do something about is the debris, because at some point we'll have so much debris that we'll not be able to put satellites in space. And I quote, they'll cause different types of damage and may need different strategies to, to be removed. This was said by Alice Gorman, an Australian expert. We also consider our plan superior because of efficiency, as we will not only manage the space traffic, but also remove the space debris thing that in the opposing plan does appear, but they do not give a certain solution for this while we do. We will actually do that through our democratic institution. It's always better to prevent a problem than to solve it. The removal of the debris will be beneficial for every single country that has satellites as the negative plan is better even regarding the effect effectiveness. Another problem that UN has is the problem regarding space becoming privatized and the private corporations being better at space from every single point of view. The private companies have a greater financial power than governments. Moreover, the private companies are willing to spend more and more money while the governments are slowly defunding the space exploration projects. Uh, example, US government defunding NASA. To put this into perspective, at the height of the space race during the 1960s, the annual budget for NASA accounted for as much as 4.5% of the total federal budget, while in recent years that number has diminished to less than 0.5% of the total budget. That's significant. It has forced NASA to shut down many critical components related to space exploration, including the shuttering of the Space Shuttle program in 2011. There are several companies now looking to establish world's first private space station. This would bring obvious benefits. It would open up space as a laboratory to anyone who could pay and would theoretically bring down the costs of manufacturing in space. And I quote, the one period of glory in NASA was the first nine years when they weren't a bureaucracy yet and they haven't gone back to that excitement, that adventurism and won't. So I would take most of the NASA budget and I would turn it into prizes for private sector. This quote was said by Newt Grinch, a famous politician from the United States. And you're probably asking yourself, what does NASA have to do with UN Security Council? Well, if anyone has read the rules of UN Security Council, they will know that UN Security Council can only regulate national organizations. So UN can control private entities like SpaceX and Blue Origin, both with a great financial power. Therefore, instead of regulating national organizations, which have poor funds, we should focus on creating an institution that can cooperate with the private companies as they have a greater financial power. It is clear that we need a good institution focused on STM and debris removal that is up to date with the information and cooperates with all sorts of institutions, but also private entities. And probably you wonder how and why are these private entities going to communicate with our institution? Well, it is very simple. Private sectors will be incentivized to join meetings under this new organization because it is a chance for them to appeal to the international community the, their achievements and how they have fulfilled their corporate social responsibilities, which directly connect to their benefits. Therefore, this plan encourages not only nations, but also private corporations exclusively to exclusively discuss STM, leading to sweep our institution, still being under UN. 
So our plan reflects better universalization than theirs as we'll have a complete de democracy in our institution, unlike UN. Our plan includes collaboration with both private and institutional entities, while their plan is forbidden to collaborate with private companies. Our plan not only manages space traffic, but also gives specific information about the removal of the debris. We give specific data regarding this solution. The efficiency of our institution is by far, by a far margin better than their plan because our institution can focus solely on space traffic management and its and its solutions. Our plan is clearly superior from every single point of view, reflecting universalization better and their plan and their plan being overall worse than ours and ours being the optimal solution for this major problem. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. We have a one minute silent break at this time. F3 of Alcantara now returns for a three minute response to NEC3. Okay, hello again. So, how can you say that the space traffic management, which is an important problem, and it isn't in the problem that appeared this year, it appeared many years ago, can be solved by an agency, uh, by an agency that has no experience and has that has no proof of efficiency, you cannot make specific countries to join your organization. This, uh, the same happened with NATO, where Russia, India, China are not participating. And they are, th these are the countries that have, an, uh, have an, a real impact in the space industry. You don't have any proof that they will join. Uh, if they wanted to solve the problem of space, space debris, uh, they would have done it still now. They won't join an organization just for this. This is why the UN Security Council is more relatable for this. You have told us that the UN Security Council is not efficient. How is your effective when you don't have any specific plan and budget for this? You don't have the uh, guarantee that you will have members in your organization that, and your organization will be powerful enough to solve this uh, problem. As Andre has explained, ESA, NASA, SpaceX, Sierra SpaceX, which are private space companies, all these companies are cooperating with UNOSA and, and basically with the UN Security Council. Are you sure that they don't cooperate? I'm sure they are. They, uh, so, according to Simona Di Pipo, director of UNOSA, it is partnering up with Sierra Space, a space private, uh, private space agency, to offer United Nations member states the opportunity to participate in an orbital space mission utilizing Sierra Space Dream Chaser space plan. The mission will be opened to all the member, uh, member of the state of the United Nations, and developing countries are particularly encouraged to participate. The United Nations Committee has always focused on the importance of an international cooperation in the use of outer space. The US Congress enacted in December will provide $10 million, as Andre said, in 2021, not in 2010, for the Commerce Department's Office of Space Commerce to conduct a space traffic management, the pilot program, with other agencies and industries. So the UN security has both experience and efficiency and power. Uh, how can you be sure that they, they won't conflict in your organization? Democracy? How do you uh, assure that? How is your plan superior? You make an organization that is uh, for this debate while UNOSA has achieved all these things in uh, 60 years since 1958. Isn't this absurd? You haven't given us any proof that it is better. And also, this is a problem that must be regulated now, not in 10 years, 20 years. 
because if you want to create an uh, agency or company now, you have to uh, have more time. So why don't we use the companies that already exist for this uh, purpose to regulate the space traffic management and they have experience in this? Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, now we have a cross-examination between AV3 and 4 and NEC3 and 4. Shaba, the negative position, will begin this cross-ex. Uh, let's see, is everybody's videos on? Okay, you may begin. So I just wanted to ask, what do you think about the US government defunding NASA? Because you totally ignored my, my argument about US that. US government? Yeah. Well, on, well, how can you assure that you and the US government will give uh, you, for example, you need more than uh, the UN Security Council, for example, because you said it is better. Well, so how do you assure that UN Security, that the US government will give you at least $66 billion? Well, I was not talking about no, US government giving our, our company, I mean, our company, our institution money, but about US government defunding actually NASA, which is quite a thing. Well, I don't quite see your point because the U.S. Security Council has that has that big budget. Yeah, NASA. What means NASA? It is the uh, North America Space Agency, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So it is U.S.'s space agency. It has nothing to do with the U.S. Security Council. Yes, they are cooperating, but U.S. Security Council cannot give them a lot of money for this because it belongs to the U.S. Okay, and I wanted also to ask you, um, what do you believe universalization is about? The cooperation oh. between countries and making, if there are many countries, there will be more collaboration and that can be further directed as power. So this is universalization. Going to space as humanity. Okay, Not okay. Countries. Exactly. Okay, and um, do you believe that the veto power supports universalization i mean the five permanent members with their power of decision do you think that we don't, have, this... we don't need to forget about the fact that there are five oh yes there are five permanent members but there are 10 that rotate every two years and these countries go all around the world and we don't exactly. have to forget about UNOSA that has 95 countries in it exactly for example UNOSA has achieved in 60 years to and the UN Security Council to get all the countries from the world to cooperate. How can your organization get all the countries in the whole world in a very short period of time? Because the ISS was hit just two weeks ago. This cannot go as it is right now. What proof do you have that your company will be uh, your industry, sorry, your industry will be done and will have an impact on the space traffic management in such a short time. If, for example, because of our plan, with... we just we just mentioned in our first uh, negative that that is our plan and that's how we're going to achieve that. Just like you know, Sa, your your entity just show the plan for re for removing the debris. So okay. it's the same thing to you. Okay, yeah, I understand that. But UNOSA has the money, it has the members, and it has the power. And the plan. Yeah, besides, besides the plan. May I? Um, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. May Stand. I? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, I just wanted to ask, um, I'm pretty sure you guys like, have already asked us before a couple times of how we would carry out our plan, correct? Um, on how we get that possible with, um, because we haven't gone that far, but we have given you examples as my um, second uh, speaker has already told you. And I will, if you don't mind, um, emphasize on those so that you can understand this a bit better. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, with regards to uh, remove debris, um, that were, they were uh, basically sorry, developed by- I'm sorry, but time is up, Skylar, oh, unfortunately. Okay. Well, basically, um, it has already been done before. Aside from just guidelines, it actually exists in history and it has already been achieved of removing space debris. So we're planning on making use of those technologies that have already done so. So 
But what I'll end it on that point. Why has had it stopped? Uh, I'm sorry, Maria. Sorry. Uh, we, yeah. one. we have a two minute silent break at this time. F4 from Team Alcantara will begin the summary in the four minute allotment. Alcantara. Uh, yeah, excuse me. So, uh, hello again, everybody. Now I'm going to conclude the debate through the final statement with the help of my colleague, Daniela and Mariah. So, Daniela, could you say something about the definition of the terms the, and both teams' perspective about the resolution? Yes, the definition of term by the other team was quite like two hours, and we think the uh, perspective of the resolution was the correct one. Mm, thank you, Daniela. So now I'll start summarizing the first argument. In my argument, I talked about space debris and how it is a major problem that STM needs to figure out. So first, space debris has destroyed, is destroying, and will destroy uh, space objects like the ISS. Second, the US Security Council already established guidelines for these street space policies, you know, St. Copus, which have 95 members, thus achieving universalization. Third, you know, so already has a plan program for space debris diminution, and they already had the, have the money for it. And fourth, US Security Council is developing collaboration not only with national space agencies, but also with private space agencies. Next, Mariah, could you tell us a few words about your argument? Yes, I will highlight the main points for my speech in order to convince you that the UN Security Council should definitely regulate space traffic management. First, the space activity is exponentially increasing and automatically the space debris is growing. The main problem is that the FAA, the current administration of space traffic management, isn't currently doing its job properly. How could it do it when the space traffic uh, space debris will be bigger? And a new uh, in industry, how could it be do it in time? The inter second, the International Telecommunication Union already developed a space policy, has a lot of knowledge in cybersecurity, and has 193 countries as members. Third, I have explained the budget and how you know scientists cannot regulate space traffic managed by themselves, and they have to they need the United UN Security Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mariah. Okay, so in the end, we think that the negative team had very well, well worked cases. The clashes in the fight were presented by the experience of the other team's uh, approach and the plan they have. They say that uh, they have a tech uh, technology, but what proof do we have on that uh, UNOSA is many steps ahead? And they have, besides the plan, the budget and the members and the experience of launching over 11,000 satellites. We think that efficient discussion is on our side. 
We think that the cross-sex really help that we can draw the following conclusions out of them. We have already presented how UNOSA already has guidelines regarding STM and also the budget for that. There is proof through the, their activities that they will manage to solve the debris problem and not only. The other team has showed us a plan on doing that, but we don't think this is relevant. We also spent seven years on the guidelines they have given in order to make uh, sure they know what they have to do. For this problem, they have given the solution of using already existing technology that has been used in space debris. Well, if this happens, why is there debris still out there? And why was the ISS hit to just two weeks ago? Why was in 2009 a collision between two satellites? Why was uh, the ISS in 2020 supposed to make three maneuvers? Uh, besides that, we totally agree that their industry or company, how they call it, may be effective, but problems need to be solved now. You have no guarantee that everything will work best. This is my main concern. NASA's first mission was a fail, for example, and so on. Just think about how missions failed before they succeed. You cannot be sure I will make that and I will surely succeed with this. No. You need to have some experience. This is how things work. You don't know how to drive a car at first. You need to learn how to do it and then you can drive uh, better. This is how things work. Uh, and yeah, this is it. Uh, we really liked the debate. And uh, with this was Tim Alcantara. Alcantara will present the affirmative role. Thank you for this amazing opportunity. Thank you, Alcantara. Uh, now, next four, that it was the Shaba Samudi in the four minute block. Okay, I'll begin my speech in three, two, one. Firstly, I would like to remind the judges that SWEEP, our organization, is fully democratic, unlike the UN Security Council, which consists of only 15 members, five of which are permanent with veto power, and 10 members which are non permanent, who only get changed every two years, as stated by the second affirmative which we as a negative believe goes against the concept of universalization. SWEEP will primarily focus on space traffic management and debris removal, which I am sure we can all agree will be able to solve the problem of space debris in a more efficient manner. I would also like to point out that we have provided specific solutions of how SWEEP will be able to solve the urgent problem of space debris by making use of lasers and remove debris. I shall emphasis on remove debris a little bit more as to explain the specifics of the goals achieved and achievements made by these people. They have created a net which targets up to two meters in diameter with a mass of up to two tons of space debris. For the September 2018 demonstration, which had happened, a CubeSat target representing an element of space debris was launched from the removed debris spacecraft and targeted by the net at a distance of several meters. It was successfully captured and this could be used for small debris. This is one example. Another one, a harpoon was also developed as well, which was, um, which had traveled at a speed of 20 meters per second and successfully impacted, penetrated a satellite panel, which was mounted to a boom, confirming its ability to capture space debris of large proportions. I shall also like to mention, I'm not entirely sure if the fourth affirmative was allowed to have two speakers on the case. However, I will leave that opinion to the judges. As you can see, we the negative team have given you specific ways of how to solve the urgent problem of space debris that both teams can both agree on. However, I have not seen these solutions from the affirmative as they currently only have guidelines. Not only are these solutions that we have given you specific, but they have already occurred in history, as I've stated before, and are not just theories. So by all of the information my team and I have given you, we believe that our plan is the better option to solve the problem of space debris, and not only to solve it, but to keep it controlled for the future of space traffic management. In comparison, AF has been very assertive and we could not really see how the space debris problem will become better by relying on frameworks existing in the status quo. They relied on how recent their guidelines were and hypothetical situations that completely relied on the premise that these guidelines will work. They never proved this premise. AF was unable to respond to our point on how the UN Security Council does not reflect universalization. They simply stated that we will go to space as humanity. Without addressing the veto system, they tried to cover this up by mentioning ANUSA has 95 countries, but that doesn't change the fact that these vetoes exist. AF's best case, which is big and a strong organization that will save the world, great potential solutions and resolutions to try to better the situation. These efforts are fancy words on paper and not bearing any fruit. 
Negative worst case, we guarantee space debris removal and actual action. Sure, it's a new organization, but this clean new slate is necessary for effective solutions, which is comparatively better. Also, I would have a question that I'd like to leave um, for my last bit of the speech. Would you agree that the UN Security Council has a role that is dedicated to peaceful negotiations taking place between nations, which, if I may add, is currently only on Earth? Would you also agree that as the human race becomes an interstellar species, our current ways and rules and construction of our nations will be changed in future in order for us to move past Earth? Then would you also not agree that since the United um, the UN Security Council's duty is to be on Earth to solve these nations' problems. I ask you, do you not agree that the human species will become independent of Earth eventually and the UNSC will be left behind with Earth's matters? So they cannot guarantee. Oh, yes. No, okay. No, you don't, okay. I'll uh, end my speech. Thank you very much. Thank you, Skylar. Uh, thank you, Team Shaba. Uh, before the judges move to the breakout room, I, I just wanted to confirm that the both teams are allowed to have multiple speakers in their conclusion, uh, just a clarification. Uh, now the judges will adjourn to their breakout room for their deliberation. They may have eight minutes, but we encourage you to return as soon as you can to the main room. Mr. Becker, uh, do we have the breakout room ready? Yes. Okay, everyone, please turn on your videos and mic. First of all, great debate, everyone. Uh, as usual, it, it was a joy to uh, watch this. So a fantastic job. And again, let's go around. Uh, be before that, though, I just want to say that I was um, moderating uh, Alcantara in the previous room. And watching them shift from um, negative to AF was is surprising. And every few seconds, it, in my mind, it was like Alcantara is negative. And then uh, it, as the moderator, it took me some time to adjust to the fact that they were affirmative. And the fact that you guys did it so quickly is really impressive. Uh, I just wanted to say that. So great job, guys. So let's hear a little bit about how you're feeling. Skydar, how are you feeling right now? I feel very, okay, well, currently I feel like quite excited and like upheated, like I just finished my speech like just now. So, and I think everyone was amazing. Um, this team was very nice. You all are wonderful. Um, yes, it was really good to, um, this was very good, this debate today. <laughs> I can't speak. <laughs> it was very lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Skylar. Um, Maria from Team Shaba. Yes, I have to say that it was a real pleasure to play with you guys because uh, we, I mean, I, I personally enjoyed this match very much. Thank you, Maria. Now can we have the other Maria? I'm so sorry if I'm causing confusions <laughs> because uh, of both of you. Oh, well, I feel more relaxed than, than when I started because I was very nervous of saying my speech, but finally I did it. And I think I did it great, as well as everybody. And I feel now happy. Thank you. Uh, I have to say you did a fantastic job at your speech. Uh, Andre, I know I interrupted you when you were saying something. Um, yeah, so it was one of the best debates I have participated in because I wasn't uh, so I was surprised to find out that they proposed their own organization. Like, I know that mo most of the teams I played with were proposing UNOSA or, I don't know, this kind of, of organizations, and they have came with their own organization. Wow, that's a, a brilliant idea. I haven't expected that, and good job for that. Yeah, I really like this debate. Thank you, Andrew. Yurika, how do you feel that? Uh, yeah, I thought this debate went really well as well. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Like my, I'm kind of like 
just functioning because it's just past midnight in Japan and I'm really tired. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought, yeah, this is a great debate. I had a lot of fun. Well, uh, thank you, Rika. We really appreciate you staying up past midnight for this. Thank you so much. Uh, Antonio, how are you feeling? Well, I really enjoyed this debate. I, I can say that this debate was much, much more interesting than the other one. <laughs> because we, I, I feel like we were more on the same page and we were kind of grappling each other's ideas. And we were very, very connected with each other. So the negative respo- responded to the affirmative and, and the, the affirmative Again, responding to the negative, very, very close. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed it. I have to agree with you. It really was a really close debate. And uh, I do not envy the judges for the job they have to do to choose a winner, because I know I certainly could not do it. Yes, Francis. I wanted to ask, um, I, I saw kind of an interesting um, perspective from both teams during this debate. Um, There seemed to be a lot of really listening uh, instead of waiting for the pounce to say what you were going to say. And I wondered if uh, understanding what universalization is about, coming to the table, everybody's being heard, uh, trying to see what is the, the best solution. Of course, you were trying to convince the judges that your solution was the best solution. But I did feel uh, kind of a, um, a give and take more in this debate. And I was just wondering, um, I'll ask you, Antonio, if the, the concept of universalization entered your mind as you were going through this debate at this time. I mean, at first, when I, when I wasn't in this competition, I didn't know what universalization was. So, so learning all these new things and I haven't studied maybe I, I didn't even hear about UN Security Council and the space debris and all these concepts and it was fantastic and regarding universalization I mean um, it's definitely an important theme for us as a whole and as humanity yeah and I don't know and then, um, Andre has been uh, down this road before uh, he's a returning debater. And I wanted to ask you, Andre, um, the, the tenets of which the debate are, are working under, and that is uh, listening and trying to work together. Did you find your behavior working in that way during these debates, uh, these series of debates this year, more so than last year? Well, uh, for sure, because I could communicate with them better in cross sexes. Like, yeah, I really think that the cross exam helped a lot in this. Point. I think your cross exam was was very mutually respected. Coach Powell, what do you have to say about what you saw? I, I thought everyone did a you know a very good job, and you know the the new information that all of you have learned is as I've mentioned before that. Uh, if only our politicians would study a topic as well as you guys have already studied it, we would be doing much better throughout the world. The same happens here in Romania. Thank you. So Daniela, how are you feeling? Um, well, after uh, this debate, I feel more relieved. Um, I'm excited. Um, also, I like uh, the development of the negative team. I like so much uh, their organization and security, no, you know? So <laughs> the, I think that this was a great uh, debate. Yeah, I really like it. I, I have to say though, um, I've been in a few rooms that Shaba has been previously, and I've uh, had the pleasure of hearing uh, you on the negative side of a few times and on the affirmative side as well. As well. And the first time I heard you guys, you were fantastic. But, but I have to admit that what I heard today and the things that you've improved on, because I remember some of the feedback the judges gave you, and I, I noticed that little differences in your speech where you've improved on that. 
So uh, that was that was uh, really enjoyable for me. So I thought your your whole experience has totally shifted and it was fantastic. So great job. Uh, Mr. Becker, are the judges ready? I think it's going Ah, here they are. Welcome back, judges. Uh, we are really excited to hear the results. Please give the teams your feedback and announce the winners. We have five minutes. Okay, um, I'll start. My name is Phyllis and uh, oh my goodness gracious, both you teams are amazing and wonderful. I literally am having such a hard time with choosing who I should, who we're going to go with. Um, I would just want to say uh, for commendable aspects, you know, all of you, just all of you, I love your words, the gestures, um, you know, the, you've got great response. I think both of you were listening to each other. And I think um, both of both sides had great arguments. And then um, you, you listened to each other, but you didn't both on, on each side, didn't all answer each other's questions. And, and I think that has to do with time and how the structure goes. And, and that's really unfortunate, you know, um, because I, I love the, the cross-examination, um, but uh, I, I have to go with um, how I think more eye contact probably would be needed um, for both sides, um, mainly because we're going into this world where we're gonna have to do online and that kind of stuff. And we're gonna have to engage the audience a lot more and you know, um, I'm not, I've, you know, more down here, more, you know, less down here, more up here um, to try to engage your audience. Um, I love the questions at the end, um, which involve the audience um, for the NIG team. And both sides, again, wonderful technique. I love the, um, for the affirmative team. I just, I love the passion that you bring into this. And that's where I come um, more towards uh, the AF team. You know, I think you've convinced me more that um, this is an important, serious situation. And you also um, address things wonderfully. And I just, uh, I have to go with Alan Kendra. So um, with that, um, I'll go ahead and give over the time to the next judge. Yeah, again, congratulations, everybody. This was a wonderful debate. We all enjoyed watching it and hearing from everybody. You've done yourselves and your countries. You should be very proud. We thought some really commendable aspects um, were for the AF team. We thought your invitation of your own teammates to participate in the last speech was very useful. We liked the way that you used your time. You had a lot of evidence that you explained verbally, where is that evidence from? We thought one area the F team could improve is addressing the argument about veto power a little bit more. And maybe you could have done that by saying, although countries have a right to veto, they might not if it's in everybody's best interest to prevent space debris and manage space traffic better. For the negative team, we thought your delivery aspects really commendable, very good vocal passion for your arguments. It's evident you really care about them and you have great hand gestures. For the negative, one thing we thought you might do better at is your answers to some of the cross-examination questions in the last cross-examination period. One argument that stood out to me for why I also thought the affirmative team won the debate is I was a little, I was, I had some lingering questions about why countries or private organizations might join and join your new organization that you are creating. They can be invited, but would they join was a question I had. And that the money where the budgeting stuff would come from 
would that be as much money as what is currently given to the UN Security Council or the UN OSO? So those were some arguments that stood out to me. I agree with Phyllis, it was a very, very close debate and we all really enjoyed watching it. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you so much, judges. A big round of applause for everyone. What a fantastic debate, you guys. Such an excellent job. Thank you so much for participating in the 2021 Spun Debate Tournament for Room 18. The debate programs would certainly not be possible without the student debaters, the coaches, the hosts, and the judges. Many, many thanks. Students and coaches, please consult the tournament bracket for your next room. Judges, please remain in the room for reporting purposes. Thank you and goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.